What's up guys, I'm Joel Dodge. Welcome back to the channel. So Bias Effects 2 Mobile has been out for a week. And now that I'm a little more familiar with the app, I wanna let you guys know what I'm thinking about it. Let's get into it. So guys, before I start sharing my thoughts about the app, I wanna actually do a vote. I want you guys to vote on something for me real quick. So I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I, I have a very limited amount of time that I can put towards this channel because I have another business that I work on and I actually have a four month old son who is, <laughs> he's a handful. Um, so this week coming up, I think I'm only gonna have time to make one bias effects video. Um, so I'm kind of torn on what I should make and I wanted to ask you guys what you think I should make. So, um, the two options are a demo of the new effects inside of bias effects 2. This would be a three to five minute long video of me using the new effects, very similar to the demo I did of the original bias effects. So the other option would be a full walkthrough of the app. And basically I'll take you through all the new features, share my thoughts about them, show you how to use them. That would be more of like a probably 15 to 20 minute long video, uh, kind of like a tutorial style video. So guys, just click on the little eye up there and you'll see the poll and you can just click on which one you want me to do. And as long as you vote by Sunday, your vote will like, help me determine which would I do. Definitely vote on one of those two um, because it'll definitely help me out a lot and I wanna make the kind of videos that you guys wanna see. So anyway, that being said, let's get into my thoughts about this app. In my first impressions video, I broke down the licensing pretty in depth. So I'm not gonna talk about that anymore here. I do still feel the same way as I felt about it in that video, but I feel like if I talk about any more details of that, I'm like beating a dead horse at this point. I covered it really thoroughly in that other video. So if you want to know about that, go watch that video. This video is going to be about my experience inside of Bias Effects 2. The first thing I want to say, <laughs> this isn't upsetting to you guys, but um, with the exception of the licensing issue and that being frustrating, I've actually been enjoying Bias Effects 2. I like the direction that they're taking the app. I think that they've made it significantly more useful for people that, especially people that are trying to use it in their home studio. And I do think they've actually improved the sound quality just across the board. But before I go any further, I do wanna talk about the bugs. Some of these actually haven't affected me but I've been seeing a lot of the same ones come up in the comments of my video and also in the review section of the App Store. So the first one is that the app tends to crash a lot for certain people when they're accessing the cloud. Kind of similar to that, people are saying for some people when they access Bias Amps, it'll also crash. It seems like a lot of people are saying that Bias Effects 2 is really quiet, especially when they compare it to the original Bias Effects. The third one that I've heard people talk about, and it's definitely affected me too, is it's noisy. It's, it's, it has noticeably more noise than Bias Effects did. Fourth thing that's been, and this is the other one that's been happening to me, that I haven't heard anybody else talk about, some of the new HD rack effects are kind of glitchy. What what happens to me is like I'll be in there trying to adjust the settings and basically the knobs stop having any effect on how it sounds. Sometimes when I restart the app, it begins to work properly and then other times when I restart the app, it's still <laughs> it's still glitching. So those are all the glitches that I know of that are happening inside of Bias Effects 2 right now. They are all kind of annoying. I think the I think the worst one is the noise because it kind of affects everything that you do inside of the app. But I do want to say that the app did just come out and it is normal for developers to need to take some time to work out bugs like this. If we're still talking about these like a couple weeks from now or a month from now, then I do think it's a problem. So anyway, that's my thoughts. I think that we need to give them a little time to work out the bugs. The other thing that I think is worth mentioning at this point in the video is that they haven't released 
MIDI controlling inside of Bias FX2 yet. So what that means is you can't use a Bluetooth controller. Between the problems with these glitches and not having MIDI controlling inside of Bias FX, I really don't recommend that anybody completely switch over to Bias FX2 right now. Hopefully in a month from now, they'll have fixed all those things and the Bluetooth controlling will be back and stuff. But as of right now, if you want to use bias effects for anything that you really need it to work for you, you should just continue using bias effects one. So if you're playing in live situations, just keep just keep using the older version of bias effects. I know that that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, once they've worked out these issues, I do plan on switching over to bias effects too. So in this part of the video, I want to talk. I want to compare, just in a very general sense, bias effects two versus the original bias effects. Um, first thing I wanna talk about is the sound quality. Um, like how how good do the effects sound? In my opinion, bias effects two does sound a little better in most cases, especially with clean tones. I found that it was um, more, it was more responsive to what you're doing. All the knobs on the, the effects and on the amps give you more control. It gives you more subtle control as you tweak it little bits and then it also gives you like a much bigger range i also think that bias effects 2 does a better job of letting your guitar's natural tone come out through the effects in through your setup so the thing but the thing about it is the apps do sound distinctly different um i've heard some people kind of complaining that they they want to be able to move their presets that they've made in bias effects over to bias effects 2 and and of course it would be nice if they let us do that but one reason that i think they might not be doing that is you actually would have to retweak them quite a bit to have them sound the same as before and maybe not even be able to get them sounding exactly like it did before because the apps sound different i guess some people might think of that as a bad thing but i actually like how the new sound a little bit more and think that it is an improvement in the overall tone and the overall your overall ability to control how you sound. So guys, the other thing I wanted to compare to the original bias effects is just how they've laid out like the app, just in a general sense. And I think it they've actually made it much more intuitive and easy to use. And I wouldn't have necessarily said I had problems with the way bias effects was laid out before, but now that I've used Bias FX2, it is a much easier interface to like navigate, um, removing things, adding new things. They even have a button where you can completely clear out everything that is inside your effects loop. Those are all really nice features. Another great thing, in my opinion, is that they added a mute button at the bottom right corner of the screen, right next to the main volume out. I think that's a great feature because a lot of times you want to mute yourself, but you don't want to mess with your volume output because then you might not put it back exactly where it was. The other thing that I really appreciate from like a layout perspective is that when you use the tuner, it actually takes up almost the entire screen. If you play in live situations, that tuner before was so small on the screen. I know for me, I usually have my iPad on the floor when I'm playing live. And when I was trying to tune, it's it was actually really hard to see, like from a standing position. The fact that it covers the entire screen um, is actually a really nice, thoughtful touch. And I guess that's how I feel about the layout of Bias FX2. It seems like they put a lot of thought into it. It seems like they improved a lot of little things that just make for an overall better workflow inside of the app. So I want to talk about the new features real quick and. I just want to say that the, the the new feature that surprised me the most as far as like how much I like it and how much I think I'm going to use it is actually the looper. Um, and I know for me when I heard they're adding a looper, it really didn't get me all that excited. But what I find to be like the most useful thing about it is that you can actually export the audio that you record in the looper. So for me, I definitely see myself using that a lot because I, I write a lot of songs and usually my songs start off with some guitar part or a series of chords that I played on the guitar and a lot of times I don't have a way to record those ideas quickly and easily um, but this looper 
you can just turn it on, set it to how many bars you want it to record, and then you can record it, and then you can export that audio. So like for me, I would send it to audio share, and then I would just have that idea from a jam session just saved, and I can re I can go take another look at it later and actually start building a song off of that. I guess the feature that we're probably all the most interested in is the guitar matching feature, and I like it. I, I think it's cool. Um, it, it does a good job of making your guitar sound like a completely different guitar. I don't think it's by any means like a perfect representation of the other guitars. I think if you put a recording of the guitar match up against like the actual thing, it would be obvious which one was real and which one wasn't. Um, but it is pretty good. Like it's good enough that there are use cases for it. Say you only have one guitar and you want to make your rhythm guitar parts sound distinctly different from your lead guitar parts in a mix. Um, I think the guitar match would be great for that. I don't think it takes the place of buying new guitars though, if that makes sense. If you really want a certain type of guitar to stand out in your mix, uh, you should go buy that guitar, you know? But if you just want some extra tonal varieties and you only have one guitar, the guitar match is going to be really useful to you. The last new feature that I want to talk about is the um, is the HD rack effects. Um, so there's a few new ones inside of Bias Effects too, and they're cool. They're they're and they're definitely fun to use. Um, but to me, they're the the least exciting new feature after using them. I think you can get a lot of those similar sounds out of the pedals that are already included in Bias Effects and Bias Effects 2. So as far as who should get the app and who shouldn't, I think that if these glitches sound like something that would be really disappointing to you while you're trying to use it, then I think you should definitely wait until they've made the updates to fix these glitches. The other thing is if the, the new features really don't sound that great to you, then you probably shouldn't get this app either because I think that is the highlight of this app. But if you think the new features sound like fun and you, you know you want to try them out, definitely pick up the app. I think it's a good time. That's my thoughts. I definitely would love to hear what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. But as always, die empty. I'll catch you in the next one.